Farouk al Qasim, the man who made Norway rich. Farouk al Qasim was a Norwegian petroleum geologist and geophysicist who made significant contributions to the field of petroleum exploration and production. When he boarded his flight from London, leaving his family back in Iraq to Oslo, Farouk al Qasim knew his life would never go back the same. Did you know Norway is so rich because of one Muslim man from Iraq? You see, in 1938, oil was discovered in Saudi Arabia for the first time, and soon after, other countries in the Middle East and around the world made their discoveries as well. One country in particular saw this opportunity and began working with drilling companies to find their oil. Even the Netherlands next door found a huge natural gas basin beneath the sea. But as years went on, Norway slowly realized that they just didn't have oil. Eventually, all of Norway's oil companies gave up and left. And only one company remained, which was also about to pack up its bags. While all this was going on, Iraq on the other side was experiencing an oil boom itself. In 1952, the petroleum company made a deal with the British to sponsor young brains from Iraq who are Iraqi students and fly them to Britain where they would study in British schools with promises that when they came back, they would have jobs in Iraq waiting for them. One of these students was a 16-year-old boy by the name of Farouk al Qasim. He was selected for the program and sent to study petroleum geology at the Imperial College of London studied there for five years, got married to a Norwegian woman and came back to Iraq with his wife at the age of 21. When he arrived back at Iraq, he was given a job with an oil company and over the next 10 years, he quickly rose in the company, getting promotion after promotion. He was seen as respectable, well-balanced and fit right in with the company's king and by the time he was 31, was ranked number five in the company. Everything was looking good for him, or so it seemed from the outside. You see, Farouk had a son who was born with cerebral palsy, a disorder which, if left treated, can be fatal. At that time, Iraq didn't have the facilities to treat that kind of disorder, and according to Farouk, there was only one country in the world that did. So Farouk, together with his family, packed their bags and said goodbyes to his family in Iraq to start a new life in Norway. They arrived in Oslo in 1968 and Farouk went to the Ministry of Industry and asked them if any oil companies were coming to Norway. In the last ditch efforts to find oil, the government desperately needed someone like him and they immediately got him working. He began by analyzing data from seismic surveys, looking for clues as to whether there was oil or not, and what he found was extremely promising. He then began writing reports warning the government to stop preparing itself to become an oil nation, saying it was only a matter of time. And then it happened. In 1971, Norway became an oil nation. It was a massive discovery one of the world's largest offshore oil basins and over 50 years later they are still pumping over a hundred thousand barrels of oil per day and they're expected to last until at least 2050. That was when Norway almost destroyed its economy. You see, when the Netherlands had that natural gas discovery we mentioned earlier, at first everyone thought it was great. They had all the gas and they could sell it to the workers and make a ton of money. A ton of demand for their currency started coming in, which made it rise in value and this meant that if anyone wanted to buy anything from them other than oil, they now have to pay higher proof and so every other industry in the Netherlands saw their exports go down, making the economy even worse. Norway was this close to falling for the same trap until Farouk made a plan. He convinced the Norwegian government to let him make the blue ring 
for how it would manage oil revenue in the country, which he was given the permission. He wrote a paper known as the Oil Commandments and it was passed into law. The most important of which was the creation of a national oil company called Start Oil. The government required that at all exploration of oil in Norway was at least 50% owned by this company so that the Norwegian government always had a major stake in things but at the same time encouraging private companies to compete with each other to discover more basins. It also forced private companies to create innovative technologies to squeeze out every last bit of oil from the oil basins whereas in most countries that oil might be found and left there because of the difficulty to get them. For the next 20 years, Farouk al Qasim continued his work as Norway's Director of Resources Management. He made sure that neither start oil or Norway's government regulators became too powerful. There had to be a balance between the two, otherwise one would become overbloated, which would lead to abuse of power and corruption. But there was still one question left unanswered what to do with the money. At first, the government used it to build infrastructures such as roads and bridges. But in 1990, Norway made one of the smartest decisions in its history. He decided to put every cent of profit from the oil industry into an investment fund, which as out of last year was worth $1.3 trillion. That's $240,000 for each person in Norway. All of this wealth, all of this stability, none would have happened if it wasn't for that one man who migrated from Iraq just because of his son, Farouk al-Qasim. <laughs>